Hi, folks. The Filipino Pee here, and none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes, but the trick is to avoid making big ones that'll cost you later on. Moving to a new country isn't something you should take lightly. It'll be a huge change that'll affect almost every aspect of your life. So before you decide to make the Philippines your new home, let me highlight the 12 biggest mistakes that foreigners make. Know the ropes. Sounds pretty obvious, right? Know what you're getting into. But so many people are too impulsive and start making plans to move to the Philippines before they really know much about it. Now, I know you guys are just mostly talking when they watch a video with a pretty Filipina and say, Wow, I'm coming over there as soon as I can. But a surprising number of people seem to be all in after watching a few videos or talking to a friend who's been here. But changing countries isn't like changing cars. You don't just decide one day to trade your old one in for a new one. There's so much more to it than that. You're making a major life decision, and you have to really inform yourself about the Philippines. It's more than just a new destination. It's a new way of life. And it might not be a good fit in many ways. Just slow up and plan a long trip here first. And always keep in mind that one man's paradise is another man's hell. Don't end up in hell. The scales may not tip in your favor. One thing I often hear guys say when planning to move to the Philippines is that at least I'll lose a bunch of weight. You know your diet's gonna change, but for some reason, you instantly assume it's gonna be for the better. You have this ideal image in your heads about living on fresh fruits and vegetables and miraculously shedding pounds as you jog down the beach every day. But the truth is somewhat different. Because of the intense heat, you might find yourself living a more sedentary lifestyle, preferring a room with Arctic AC to a blazing hot beach and set up your butt. And although there might be a fresh vegetable stand on the street corner, the woman who cooks your meals might be used to serving less healthy stuff. The fact is, your average Filipino isn't big on vegetables and a lot of families don't even have them in their diet at all. We tend to eat too much fried food and rice, and we sometimes even eat fried chunks of fat. Our drinks are almost always loaded with toxic levels of sugar, and if we can somehow find a way to make a meal sweet, we will. Obesity is becoming a real problem in the Philippines, so don't count on the locals to help you lose weight. Even though healthy food is available, there are many instances where you'll be tempted to eat street food or accept an invitation to eat at the house of a local friend, and you're probably not gonna find many vegetables ending up on your plate. So unless you like to cook your own food, don't count on being able to see your own toast anytime soon. Don't underestimate your budget. I often hear guys tell me about some YouTube videos they watched that claim a person can live just fine in the Philippines on 30,000 pesos a month. Now, I've been over this ad nauseum, but five or six hundred US dollars just isn't gonna cut it. Unless you're prepared to live just like a local, which the vast majority of you, I'm talking like 98% of you, are not. You can do it for a while, but you'll soon find out all the things that locals have to do without, just to survive, like dental care and cable TV and Twinkies. And when you hit a major expense, like a health emergency, you suddenly find yourself underwater with no way out. Foreigners do go broke here, so make sure you're not one of them. As I've said many times, after listening to hundreds, maybe even thousands of foreigners, you're gonna need at least 50,000 pesos, or about $1,000 per month, to have any kind of decent life here, by yourself. At a girlfriend, a wife, or a family, the price goes up from there. In fact, I'd say over half the guys I've talked to claim that $2,000 a month is much more realistic. So do your research, put pencil to paper, and hammer out a budget you can be comfortable with. Don't settle in one spot, yet. You might think that every city in the Philippines is pretty much the same, along with its inhabitants. They may look very similar on the surface. Sarsar stores everywhere, animals asleep in the road. But if you think that, 
you'll be missing a lot of opportunities to find the perfect place to live and especially the right companion. Not only does our culture make Filipinas different from Westerners, it also makes us different from each other. The Philippines isn't a monolith. We're a conglomeration of many cultures, languages, and mindsets that vary from island to island. When I hear someone say, all Filipinas are so-and-so, I have to shake my head because that would be like me saying, all Americans are fill in the blank. How could I possibly finish that sentence? All Americans breathe air? They're a melting pot of different cultures and attitudes, just like we are. So if you seem to be running into the same issues over and over again, and not finding a city that fits, or a Filipino partner that suits you, then it might be time to look on a different island, in a different venue, for a woman from a different background. Staying in one place and pursuing women from the same dating pool won't necessarily get you different results. Move around a little and you'll quickly discover the Philippines is not all the same. And life with Warai women is quite different from being with an Ilongo. Know which laws are different. Many of you folks assume that the laws are basically the same here. Justice is justice, right? Well, that depends on what you mean by justice. Most foreigners never run into problems here, and Filipino jails aren't packed with innocent foreigners. But it's still best to carefully research the laws of the country you'll be living in, because ignorance of the law is not a good defense. But most people say they've never had any trouble with the legal system. I don't think I've ever met a foreigner that wasn't perplexed by some of the laws here, like the fact that you guys can't own property in the Philippines, or that your girlfriend can't just leave the country at will like you can, or that the police aren't going to instantly appear at your door because of a noise complaint about your neighbor's barking dogs. You're in a different world here, and you need to know the rules of that world before you get here, or things might not turn out like you planned. I have several videos about laws that will surprise you, and being forewarned is being forearmed. Don't underestimate the inconveniences. Whenever you move to a completely new place, there's often a honeymoon period where things that would normally be incredibly annoying or even soul-crushing appear cute or quaint when you first experience them. And people have a tendency to idealize things just because they're different, not because they're better. At first, you might actually think it's cool that we buy milk in boxes with expiration dates in the next decade. You might even say, now why didn't we think of that? But a year from now, you look at that same little box with disgust and crave a glass of cold, fresh milk that's actually got some flavor in it. You might think it's cute when the waitress comes back to your table to tell you they're out of ice for the water you ordered half an hour ago. But after a few months of dragging yourself around in the heat, you might be far less forgiving when you can't even get a few frozen cubes of a substance that makes up 70% of the Earth's surface. At least half the foreigners I've talked to that have been here for more than a year or two, they talk about wanting to go back home for a break. When I ask them why, they often just smile and look a little uncomfortable and say, you know, when I keep digging, they finally admit that life in the Philippines is getting to them and they need a taste of home. That's not to say they regret their choice to live here. It's just a good indication that not everything is paradise here which it certainly is not. You might be one of those people that can quickly adapt and adjust to a new way of life. But if you're not, and think you can bring the West with you here in the Philippines, you've got a bumpy road ahead. There can be only one. One of the most common mistakes is focusing on one woman, also known as one-itis, especially before you even get here. You obviously can interview every single available Filipina, but the more women you get to know, the better your chances of finding the best mate. Now, I know it's easy to fixate on one woman, probably the woman you were chatting with when you were back home, because it can feel like she's your lifeline, the only person you know in a strange new country, and you're counting on her to help you with everything from finding a place to live to navigating all the paperwork you're going to have to do and locating government offices in a country with almost no addresses. 
But when you put all your eggs in one basket and hang all your hopes on a person you don't even know that well, you not only increase your risk of getting taken advantage of, but you miss out on a lot of other possibilities. Don't let one person lead you to the Philippines. Blaze your own trail here and decide later on who gets to be the lucky person to go on the journey with you. Dreams for a busy social life. You might think you'll have a big circle of good friends here in the Philippines. Guys just like you who moved here to start over. Guys with the same interests and the same hobbies. Guys you can hang out with on the golf course. There's certainly worthwhile things to get involved with here, like the Rotary Club and other stuff. But it might not exactly be the social scene you expected. Now this is certainly not true in all places. But in many provincial settings, you'll be the only foreigner in town. Even if you find a few others, you might not get to be very choosy about your friends. Now, many of you say you're leaving the West because you don't want to be around other foreigners. Well, that sounds nice at first, but you might be surprised how much you'll eventually crave someone else to talk to with a common culture. Someone who's seen the TV show MASH or knows what a calzone is. Filipinas often end up wanting to go home because they miss their own people and their own culture. So don't be surprised if you do too. Independent loner types might not have this kind of problem. But if you're a social butterfly, you might end up feeling isolated here. So before you arrive, think about what you do to pass the time. Some guys just end up eating or drinking and having sex. But if that isn't enough to keep you happy, think long and hard about what activities will make you feel fulfilled and then see if they're even available here. Some guys have a vague idea about becoming a nature tourist, spending their lives exploring the islands, the beaches, and the natural beauty. And if that's your plan, there's plenty of that to last you a lifetime. But whatever your passion, Make sure it's something you can actually do before you move over here and find out that your giant firearms collection can come with you. Don't lead with your wallet. It's instinctive for many guys to be flashy and try to impress a woman by leading with their wallet. Just like it's natural for a woman to put on makeup and do whatever she can to look attractive. It's the age-old story of a man wanting to show he can provide and a woman wanting to show that she's worth providing for and that she is the answer to all his needs. I can tell you how many times a guy will immediately start listing his assets and talking about his properties and the lavish vacations he's taken. In general, the more a man feels like the woman he's talking to is out of his league, the fatter his wallet seems to get. But this behavior isn't just confined to insecure guys. It's a lot of you. Think back to all the first dates you've had with women and the things you've talked about during that introduction phase. In hindsight, you might regret pouring it on quite so thick. The problem with using that strategy is that if you use money as bait, don't complain when all you catch are sharks. So instead of talking about what you have, let her know who you are and what it is you're looking for. Unless it's something kinky, in which case I suggest you don't mention it. If she's attracted to you before she finds out you're the heir to the Rockefeller fortune, then you have a better chance of ending up with someone who's in it for the right reasons. So put away the Rolex, forget about the fancy car you own back in the West, and just be you. Save any wonderful surprises you've got for her till after the engagement. It's nobody's business. Many of you guys say, I'm coming to the Philippines to retire. I'm not coming there to work, but there are also a lot of you that need some kind of income to live the life you want, and you think you can earn it while you're here. Some of you even think you can get a job here. Just walk into a store and apply. But I hate to tell you, that's not gonna happen. We have laws that give jobs to Filipinos first, and you just don't see foreigners working here unless they own the place, which is almost always one of three things, a bar, a restaurant, or a laundromat. Now, I know some of you guys are successful Western entrepreneurs with decades of experience turning dust into diamonds. And you're thinking, oh, I bet I can show those Filipinos how to start a real business that doesn't involve cooking chicken. But unfortunately, 
most of your ideas just won't work here. You might have plenty of experience in dealing with employees that don't show up for work, supplies that don't arrive, and frustrating government red tape. But until you've tried it in this country, don't count on being successful. Even if you think you have a killer idea for a business, the economy here might not support it. I've talked to one guy who wanted to open a comic shop because he vacationed here once and didn't see any. Well, there's a reason he didn't see any. The only place a comic shop would survive is in a big city. And even then, the demand for that kind of thing isn't even a fraction of what it is in the West. Or a home furnishing store. You might be able to make that work in Manila, but most Filipinos don't really have much furniture. And when we need something, we often buy it used or make it ourselves. Even in a decent-sized city with a few hundred thousand people, there might only be one or two furniture stores. But whatever you plan to sell, be aware that you'll be competing with a bunch of Chinese junk that's low cost and low quality. Filipinos always go for low cost. So good luck going up against places like Unitop, which is like a Chinese Walmart, selling everything from chinelas to chopsticks. Yeah, you might find your niche and succeed, but I sure wouldn't count on it. It's not that you can't make money here, it's that you probably won't. I'm sure you've heard the joke, how do you end up a millionaire in the Philippines? Bring two million with you. Don't make the mistake of thinking you're going to be able to use your business sense here, because chances are, it's not going to happen. Home is where the heart is, if you can find one. One thing that catches most foreigners off guard is the rather bizarre way we handle real estate here. Most of you come from places with an organized real estate market, where you can trust the listings to contain information that's basically true. When you see a listing that interests you, you contact an agent who responds pretty quickly to your request for a showing, and then helps you find plenty of other places that suit your needs. Now, when it comes to the Philippines, take everything I just said and throw it out the window. Especially outside the bigger cities, real estate is a total mess. Listings often don't show the correct price, and you can waste an entire afternoon trying to see a place that was listed at $250 a month but actually turns out to be 400 bucks. No explanations, no apologies. You might think that's just a tactic used on foreigners, but you'd be wrong. Filipino citizens just like me face the same problem. Not only that, but the information on the ads is almost always misleading or just plain wrong. What's supposed to be a four bedroom is actually two, and the measurements for square footage and living area are nothing but guesses. And good luck getting someone to show it to you, because it probably won't be an agency. It'll be an unlicensed person on a motorbike who heard about a house for rent and posted their own listing for it. You won't be dealing with the seller. You'll be dealing with this person you called from a Facebook ad, who'll turn around and try to negotiate with the property owner to get a cut of the action. There are some good agents. In fact, I know a good one here in Dumaguete. But there are far more hustlers out there than professionals. But whatever you do, get a legally prepared lease. And when it comes time to sign it, make sure you're dealing with the person who actually owns the property you're renting. It's virtually impossible to do any of this online. So you probably won't be able to start looking until you get here. And if you're tempted to get something lined up from where you are, it's probably better to forget about it. Every person that comes to the Philippines needs a place to stay, but we sure don't make it easy on ya. Where's the exit? Okay, here's a big one. And for every case you hear about, there's a hundred that you don't. You move to the Philippines, you give it your best shot, but you hate it. It's just not for you. Maybe your relationship self-destructed. Maybe you got screwed over a few times by the locals. Maybe you just can't take the heat and you want to get out of the kitchen. For whatever reason, you realize you made a big mistake. But do you have an exit strategy? Do you have the funds to not only make it back home, but to have enough to restart your life there? Do you have an emergency plan? A plan that basically reverses your move to the Philippines. Do you know where you'd live? Do you know how you'd survive if your adventure here fails? 
don't back yourself into a corner because you sure don't want to be one of those foreigners wandering around Cebu with a sign that says, need plane fare. And yes, that actually happens. And don't count on the embassy of your home country to come rushing to your aid because usually they won't. But I'm not just talking about having enough money to leave. I'm talking about having a plan after you get back home or wherever else you might go. Foreigners often tell me that they've burned too many bridges with their friends and family and that without help, they can't afford to live back in the West. But whatever your situation, make sure you think ahead. Listen to the advice of stewardess P and familiarize yourself with the exits before getting on the plane. So those are the 12 most common mistakes that foreigners make. I hope you were entertained and informed and maybe I mentioned something you hadn't thought of yourself. Because you know what they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Well, I'll be back on Friday with something so secret that even I don't know what it is yet. Till then, folks. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your stewardess, making sure you stay in an upright position during the video and guiding you to the exits. The exits of all your worries about life in the Philippines. The captain has asked that you please give a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to this channel. And for your entertainment, we have a selection of other in-flight movies for you to enjoy. In the case of an emergency landing, place your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. Have a nice flight!